Marcus Scott Dreisbach hasn't lost to start as the Michigan quarterback. Blindsided here by Casey Daly. Northwestern recovers. Backups have to warm up just in case. Turnovers in the first quarter by the quarterbacks. Joaquin Fazell, the hit on Steve Schnarr. Rob Sweet recovers. Dreisbach, you saw the hit earlier. He stays in the game. And now on play action to tie streets. 36 yards to the 18th. Chris Howard scored from there. 16-0 Michigan. And could it get any worse for Northwestern? Paul Burton, the punter, bobbles the snap. It went down to a knee, so the ball was dead back there. Fourth quarter, third and 11. 16-point hole here comes the purple. Steve Schnurr to Brian Musso. 26 yards out of bounds inside the 10. Mel Brown would eventually score. He made a 10-point conversion with 16-8. After two field goals at 16-14. Fourth and nine, Musso picks up another big play. This one, the fourth down for the first down to keep the drive alive. It sets up a Brian Goins field goal. He was two for two. You hear those whistles? So this field goal from 39 yards out didn't count. The ball was not marked ready for play yet by the officials. So they've got to do it again. Oh, the heartache on both sides. The tension on the young kicker. This was a facet of Northwestern that people questioned. This one wasn't as perfect as the last one, but it's still three points. And Northwestern defeats Michigan 17-16 in a wild, wild game. Yes, Darnell Autry ran for and State Coop, and the Bucks look to stay unbeaten. First quarter and scoreless, Stanley Jackson. Demetrius Stanley. I don't see any Nitt Nittany Lions. 42-yard score, 7-0 Buckeyes. It's 24-0 Penn State. Or Ohio State, Penn State down, and Pepe Pearson starts rounding off some yards behind old number 75. 10 yards there. This one starts right, cuts back left, 10 more yards, and finish the drive up the middle. One-yard touchdown. Pearson, 11 carries, 141 yards. Jopa's worst loss since the 44-7 loss to Notre Dame back in 1984. Ohio State, too impressive. Oh, Evans, very highly touted freshman, and watch him here. Reads the blocks well and 69 yards to the end zone. Evans had a big day running the ball. Two touchdowns, 168 yards on the ground. Green was taken to the hospital for x-rays, so we'll keep an eye on that as the week goes on. But Nebraska, once again, big over Kansas State. 39-3 the final. Arkansas, this was a 14-7 game at halftime and in the third quarter, and, well... Chris Aikens, the interception, is he going to run it back all the way to tie the game? No, he's out of bounds, but they're within field goal range. So Arkansas missed the field goal. Danny Werfel says, all right, close game, second half, this is something new. Let's make a show. Riddell Anthony, 23-yard score, 21-7 Gators at that point. Werfel, 462 yards passing. That's a school record. Riddell Anthony caught three of the touchdowns, and Werfel is now behind only tied on Georgia Tech, a team we weren't really sure about. What a great pitch by Joe Hamilton to C.J. Williams, and Tech's up 10-0. George O'Leary's defense shut down a Virginia offense that could not get its mark going today, and Georgia Tech in Atlanta surprises Virginia 13-7. The Yellow Jackets forced five turnovers, handing Virginia their first loss of the year. Southern Cal taking on Cal. Three of the four suspended USC players had to watch from the sidelines today. They couldn't use them on the defense. Pat Barnes, the Cal quarterback, operating in that West Coast quarterback-friendly offense to Damian Douglas, six yards out, 7-0 Cal. Now on a fourth down, Barnes rolls and finds his tight end, Tony Gonzalez, 13-0 Cal after they missed the point. Things didn't go the way of Southern California all day. DeLon Washington fumbles at the one. Cal eventually recovers. Cal wins at the Coliseum over SC for the first time in nearly a quarter century. Team of 1976 at Pitt. Third quarter high scoring game, 38-27. Henry Burris, the Temple quarterback to Van Johnson, 87 yards. Burris had 445 yards on the day and was responsible for five touchdowns. Fourth quarter, 52-41 Temple, four and a half left. It's Mark Little, the quarterback, to Mark Butler, 14 yards. It's a five-point lead. Later in the fourth, under a minute to go, Billy West scores from six yards out. The Panthers take a 53-52 lead. That's how they win it. You didn't see how Pitt got the ball back for that last series. It was 17-0 at this point, and that defense forces a turnover. Perlo Bastine picks it up and takes it in. That made it 24 to nothing. On the way to a 34-17 win. 10 sacks for the Mountaineer defense, and Chad Johnston breaks out of a mini slump with his big numbers. West Virginia's already qualified for a bowl. They've beaten 6-1-8 teams. The Bears hat on him.
Kentucky taking on Alabama. 7-0. Kentucky's down. Billy Jack Haskins rolls. Goes down the sidelines. 41 yards and tied at 7 in Bill Curry's first visit to Tuscaloosa since he left as the Bama coach. But Dennis Riddle comes in. Starts running up touchdowns. You saw one of his four. Riddle in for the injured Curtis Alexander. Helps Alabama behind that good defense stay undefeated. Auburn down 7-0. Middle of the second quarter. Robert Baker, the sophomore, takes it. Gets all the way through the South Carolina coverage team, and he's going to go. 79 yards for the score. That tied it at 7. This game got real tight late. A turnover led to a Damian Craig touchdown with three and a half left. Would strike. Andrea Horace, 42 yards and a touchdown. Uh-oh. Boise State's up 7-0. No need to panic. Terry Battle goes in from 12 yards, 56 unanswered points. Arizona State is off to its best start in nine years, but now plays four of its last six on the